Marcy, it's probably about to press speed. It's probably in the bonus game with a lot of pressure at the time. Hello fellow RC explorers, today we're going to flash and set up the new TriFlight firmware which is absolutely fantastic. So many improvements have been done to this and it's vastly improved the performance of the tricopters. This works on both the mini tricopter and the large tricopter and probably in mostly all tricopters out there. So thank you so much to Lauke and all the other guys on the forums that have helped this code happen. It's really because of you that the tricopter flies this good. Okay, before you do anything else, remove the props. Like seriously, you're gonna get a flying blender in your face. Just do it. Also, do not connect the board yet. No, no. We need to install some drivers before doing that. So jump over to the computer and go to rcexplorer.sc. Navigate to the shop and then click on the platform you plan on flying. It's important that you click on the correct tricopter, otherwise you're gonna end up with the wrong firmware. Now click on the pre-configured clean flight setup tab, then scroll down to the USB to URT driver and click that link. Download the driver that's made for your operating system and then install that driver. I'm running a Mac, so I'm just gonna install this real quick here. It's a good idea to restart your computer after you're done. Now head back to the product page. You need to install Google Chrome in order to use CleanFlight, so do that first. I already have it, so next we're going to install the CleanFlight app. Just click the link and then click Add to Chrome. Click Add App and CleanFlight should show up in your app launcher. Once again, head back to the product page. Download the super mega uber awesome TriFlight code that the really talented coder named Lauka on the RC Explorer forums have written. If you're using a different board than the F3FC, click this link and find the hex file associated with your board. Like this one if you're using an Ace32 tricopter frame. Now it's time to open CleanFlight. If you don't know where to find the Google Chrome apps, just open a new tab and click the apps button. Then click CleanFlight. Now we can finally start configuring the board. Flashing an F3 based board like this requires one extra step, and that's entering DFU mode. Your board should have one of these little boot buttons that you need to press and hold while plugging in the USB cable. If done correctly, only the green LED on the board should light up. If you're running a Mac, the port up in the right corner of CleanFlight is going to change to DFU, and you can flash the board. However, if you're running Windows, there's one step in between that you need to do. In CleanFlight, there's a link to a program called Zadig. Go there and download the software. Once you've downloaded the software and launched it, plug in the board while holding down the boot button. Windows should now recognize a new driver. Let it install this and just wait for it. Once it's done, go to the Zaggy program and click Options, List All Devices. Select the unit called STM32 Bootloader. Make sure that this field says WinUSB version 6.1 or higher. Then click Replace Driver. And then finally Install. CleanFlight should now recognize this unit in DFU mode, and you can flash the board. If you're running a good old F1 board, all you have to do is just plug it in. Go to the Firmware Flasher tab in CleanFlight, scroll down and click Load Firmware Locally, and navigate to where you downloaded the TriFlight firmware to, and select it. Make sure that the full chip erase function is active, and then scroll down and click Flash Firmware. Once it's completed, the port should show up in the right corner, and you can click Connect. So click the configuration tab and find the board alignment section. If you're running a standalone flight controller, you don't need to change anything here. But if your tricopter has a built-in flight controller like this, you need to set the pitch to 180. Otherwise your copter is going to be as stable as my wife's mascara bottle. Ah, ah. Ooh. ah, so close. Why would someone design this? Anyway, let's set up the receiver. If you're running a receiver with one channel per wire, then select parallel PVM. The F3FC board doesn't support this, so you need a PPM receiver or a receiver that's capable of delivering a serial digital protocol, like SBUS. And that's what I'm going to show here. Since we're already in the configuration tab, I'm going to turn on the current meter since I'm running an F3FC board which has one built in. Hit save and reboot. CleanFlight is currently a little buggy when it comes to VCP drivers, so sometimes the auto connect doesn't work. But you can just hit the connect button. Go to the ports tab. In TriFlight, URT1 is already set to serial RX, so just plug in your receiver to that port. I'm running an FR Sky system in this, so I'm gonna enable Smart Port, which is their telemetry system. So I'm gonna set that to URT2. So disable MSP on that channel. And then save and reboot. I forgot to activate the telemetry function in the configuration tab, so I'm just gonna head back there real quick and activate that. 
Now head over to the receiver tab. We're gonna do all the transmitter setup. So we're gonna start off by making a new model memory. This is so there's no hidden subtrims or anything. A fresh start is always the best. I'm just gonna set this up as a basic acro model with no extra features. Then I'm gonna program the switches. I recommend using two two position switches and one three position switch to change between flight modes, arming the board and also activating the awesome tail tune feature. Time to plug in the main flight battery so the receiver is powered up. The bars on the top should now display the live receiver values. So now we can test if the sticks move in the right direction. Moving the aileron stick to the right should increase the value. Moving the elevator stick forward should increase the value. Moving the yaw stick to the right should increase the value. And moving the throttle up should increase the value. If something moves in the wrong direction, you need to go into your transmitter's reverse menu and reverse that channel. Now we're going to make sure that the center of the stick equals 1500 microseconds. Go into the subtrim menu on the transmitter and increase or decrease until the value on the computer says 1500 microseconds. Or as close as you can get it. Then go into the endpoint adjustment and then move the stick all the way over to one corner and increase it until it says 2000 or 1000 in the opposite direction. This way you get the best resolution possible and the best performance out of the board. Now repeat this for all the other channels as well. Different transmitters work differently when it comes to endpoint adjustment and subtrim, so you might have to do some trial and error to get this perfectly right. But since you only have to do this once, it's definitely worth the time. Now that you're done with that, we're going to set up the dead band. This is another way of saying at what point the board recognizes a signal as a valid one. As you can see here, the numbers jump up and down a bit, and we don't want to have the board interpret that as a valid input signal. Go to the CLI tab and type get deadband. The two values we're interested in is the deadband and the yaw deadband. Currently it's set to 5 on both. Depending on how many points your receiver jumped up and down, for instance 1495 to 1505, that means that you have to set your deadband to greater than 5. I recommend having it at 10 then at that point. Just type set deadband equal 10 and hit enter. Then type set yaw deadband equal 10 and then hit enter again. Then just type save and then you're done. Now click on the modes tab. It might take a couple of seconds before the board has rebooted, but just wait for it. Here we're going to set up which features the different switches on our transmitters activate and deactivate. I highly recommend setting up a switch to arm and disarm the board. Just click the add range button and then make sure that you got the right switch that you want to use. In this case I'm going to use AUX1 and then just drag the range where that switch is activated. By hitting the switch up and down you can see where it's activated and not. I'm going to have my flight modes set up on the three position switch. So I'm going to add a range for the angle, which is going to be in the middle, and then one for the horizon, which is going to be at the top. We don't need to add a range for the acro mode because the board assumes it's in acro mode when it's not in any other mode. Next assign a switch for the tail tune feature. This mode is used to set up the throw angles on the tail and also do an in-flight calibration which vastly improves the tail performance of the tricopter. Don't forget to hit save. Talking about the servo throw angles, we're going to set that up next. Power up your copter. Take the servo setup tool and place it like this. Make sure it's shoved all the way up so it's resting against the boom. Activate the tail tune mode on your transmitter. Move the aileron stick either to the right or the left. The servo will move to that side and you can now use the rudder stick to set up the endpoints. You want the top piece of the tilt mechanism just touching the servo setup tool. If you go too far, the tail boom will lift up out of the servo setup tool. Move it back a little bit and then push it down again. The boom should always be resting at the bottom of the servo setup tool, otherwise the angle is not going to be correct. When you get the top piece just touching the servo setup tool, you're done with that side. Now move the aileron stick to the other direction and do the same setup procedure as you did on the other side. Now it's time for the vertical position, so move the elevator stick upwards. Loosely adjust it and then flip the servo setup tool around. Adjust the angle until the motor is perfectly level. This can be a bit tricky, but if you use the servo setup tool and look at something flat on the copter, like the top tray on the mini tricopter, you're going to figure it out. You're almost done. We just need to do one last thing. Pull out the servo setup tool and turn it 90 degrees. Put the boom on there. Make sure that no wire is going to touch anything. Then move the elevator stick downwards. This triggers the servo speed measurement. Once it's done, it's going to make these tones. This means that all your settings have been saved. 
If you're using a servo which doesn't have a servo feedback wire, the servo speed measuring is not going to be done. The servo will sit still and just save your settings, making the same completion notes. A virtual servo model would be used in the firmware, but it's not going to have the same performance as a servo feedback wire servo. Now we're going to calibrate the throttle endpoints on the speed controllers. Head over to the motor tab, click on the I understand the risk, propellers are removed, enabled motor control. If you haven't already removed the props, you're going to bring on the apocalypse and a thousand years of pain. Drag the master slider all the way to the top and then plug in the flight battery. Listen for these tones. Quickly drag the slider all the way to the bottom. These tones are what you're going to hear if you use a BL Heli flash speed controller. If you use any other speed controller, these tones might be different. Disable the motor controller and head back to the setup tab. You're almost ready to go out and do the first flight, but first we need to calibrate the accelerometer. Find a flat object that you can put the frame on but not hit any of the screws and place the whole thing on a flattened level surface. Then click the calibrate accelerometer in the setup tab. Do not touch or move or breathe on the copter at this point, just let it sit completely still until it says it's finished. The PID settings in this firmware is set for the mini tricopter with the Emacs power pack. If you're running the old power pack or setting this up as a tricopter version 4, go to the product page, click the pre-configured clean flight setup tab and then copy those PID settings there. Then go into the CLI tab and paste. It automatically saves those settings and reboots the board. Now you have a great flying copter without tuning anything. That's all the setup you have to do on the computer. Now you can put the propellers back on the copter. This is the most optimal way to mount the propellers. Having the two front propellers rotate outwards instead of inwards helps the yaw movement during turns. This is not super critical though. The only prop that is super important that you have spinning in the right direction is the back one. It needs to be spinning counterclockwise. Otherwise all the improvements that have been made to the yaw in the code is not going to work and the copter is going to fly horribly. Okay, time to go out and fly. The first thing we're going to do is just hover the copter to see if it explodes or not. So just plop it up, hover it a little bit. If it seems stable and not explodey, you can activate the tail tune by flipping the switch. After you flip the switch, you get 5 seconds to put it into a nice stable hover, after which you should touch the sticks as little as possible. When you give any stick input except throttle, the copter will stop doing the tail tune and resume it as soon as you stop touching the sticks. But for the best result, it's best to do this on a really nice calm day and then just let the copter do its thing without touching the sticks at all. The copter is going to make some beeps in the air while it's doing this tail tune. One beep means that it's increasing the value and two beeps means that it's decreasing the value. When it finds a good medium of this, it's going to beep the finishing tones, like this. This means that the in-flight tail tune is now complete. Land the copter, disarm it. Do not turn off tail tune until after you disarm the copter, otherwise the settings might not save. You're done! Everything is saved, everything is good, and you can now fly it to your heart's content. The tail tune can be done in any flight mode, so you can use horizon or angle mode to make it a little bit easier for you if you're not used to flying an acro. Also, do this tune on a calm day. You can do the tail tune without a beeper, just hover for a really long time to just so you're a hundred percent sure you got a good value and then save it. But I really recommend getting a beeper. It's awesome to have the lost beeper alarm on the copter as well. Hey, I want to hear your feedback. Go to the RC Explorer forum and post your experience with the setup video, with the firmware, with the copters, everything. I need your feedback to make the products better. Thank you so much for watching and I see you next time.